Okay, I wanted to uh, show you a hand strap um, you can make for your Fuji or for your Nikon. Um, right now I'm obviously uh, using it through the hand strap by lashing on the bottom of the battery, uh, vertical battery grip on the Fuji X-T1. But in a second I will show you how to use it for anything including a Nikon. And uh, oh my god, I've owned every decent hand strap out there made for the past 20 years, mostly for Nikon. And uh, I recently got, which I'll be reviewing soon, the uh, Fuji hand strap. This one's more comfortable. Now, the Fuji hand strap is 60 bucks. This one you can make yourself for $2, probably less than that. Get this um, one inch webbing at your local uh, camping slash hiking store, you know, where the uh, tofu, tofu munching uh, uh, hippies hang out and uh, talk about global warming. <laughs> It's, um, grab yourself, I don't know, a couple feet of this. Depends on how many you want to make. Maybe you want to make, make one for somebody else. Now, I happen to have a crap load of uh, crummy old camera straps laying around. So what I did is I sacrificed one by cutting uh, this end piece. Now, you could actually buy this webbing, but you can't really buy the buckles. Well, you can off of eBay, but I just sacrificed an old... Uh, Neck strap, let's say a Nikon neck strap, it could be any neck strap for Fuji, Nikon, whatever. And uh, it took me about uh, 15 minutes to make this, and it is really, really, really comfortable. Um, here you can see I've got another Fuji, very, very lightweight. It's actually very stylish, you can get whatever color you want. It actually looks professional. I mean, you have to admit. Now, I want to show you actually how this is done. Um, obviously, first you cut one end. You leave the other end. Don't cut it, this uh, blue piece or black, whatever you will want to first. Only cut uh, a hole. Now, I use the soldering gun to actually, uh, you know, melt the frayed ends to widen the holes. So if you got a soldering gun, use that. Or you can use a stove or a lip match to uh, knock off the frayed ends since this stuff is nylon and then a hole big enough to drop your uh, camera your sacrificed ends of your camera strap through and here you can see how it's looped so it's actually not attached up here okay so loop it through that way and the same way through the bottom once you get this piece cut obviously have this if this were on your blue piece you know out about however far so you want to bring your hand through and it'll be out here just mark it with a sharpie obviously i marked it right here cut my blue webbing or yours black whatever and then made another hole through there so you can see how it's actually looped through. Now it's easily removable and it's easily adjustable. Now one thing that I did, and it does not hold it in, it doesn't matter if this bottom piece were loose like this, it wouldn't matter as far as how it's secured because the buckle is what's actually holding it in. But uh, simply for both aesthetics and uh, and just to hold it flat, since there's no need for it to ever move, I actually took the bottom piece and from here to here super glued it to the base of my blue webbing. But I don't have to do that. That doesn't hold it in. In other words, if the super glue let loose, the camera, the hand strap is not going to let loose. The buckle is holding it in. So this is how you do it. And it's really, really handy. Very, very lightweight. It looks professional. It's very comfortable. And uh, now the question is, well, I don't have a vertical grip. I want to attach it to my Fuji. And, uh, you know, you've got this right now, very handy, so I'm going to attach it to my tripod socket. How do I do that? Well, instead of this hole, if you got an icon, or if you got a Fuji, without a vertical grip, you know, like the, uh, the uh, X-T10 or whatever Fuji you got, you use one of your Black Rapid uh, links and stick it in your tripod socket, of course. I could actually screw that in there one-handed. There we go. So it's going to have to be a little bit, little bit longer. So you can't actually use this piece or this one. You're going to have to make one either for this or for that. But it's happened to be the right length, of course. You cut this very last. So this is going to be looped right through there. So no difference at all except from where it's looped at. So very handy. Looks professional. Extremely comfortable. Two bucks. All you're going to need to buy, actually, is um, some blue or black webbing or whatever the hell color you want. Um, you don't have to super glue these bottom pieces on like I did. It doesn't hold it in place, and you're going to have to sacrifice some crappy old camera strap and be sure you've got one laying around. I know you do. So, two bucks. Um, the Fuji hand strap is, what, 50, 55 bucks? This is two bucks. You can sit there while you're scratching your fanny and watching TV and make one. Make one for someone else. When you're done making yours, make another one and give it as a gift. It looks professional. It looks like something you actually bought. So, nice, uh, super 
tip trick of the day and that's it that's your hand strap for your Fuji or your Nikon or whatever the hell other camera you got make it yourself and by the way hand straps are notorious most all of them are crappy old stuff made in uh, China and they're stitch in they got some really stiff fine weak stitching holding them in and it's very easy for them to fray apart I've seen it before and this is incredibly durable this is not going to come loose this is this is some tough stuff okay so you know where to get the webbing if you can't if you don't have a local uh, hippie store that sells uh, hiking and uh, climbing stuff to get this webbing you could uh, buy it on uh, eBay really cheap you know buy a 10 foot section of it for a buck or two anyway that's it for the day catch you later bye